From my mother's womb, you have chosen. are glad that you are here if you're online thank you for being here let's open with a with a word of prayer uh, dear Heavenly Father Lord you know as we uh, we come before you uh, you know we confess our need for you Lord we ask that 
You renew our hearts, Lord. Renew our minds and our lives, Lord. Help us keep focused on what is pure, what is right. Give us the power to be obedient to your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Great job singing, everyone.
with our Lord. Holy, 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 I want to see you. Holy, 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 I want to see you. that line I want to see you open up my eyes right amen everyone. Good morning. It's a beautiful, wonderful March morning. I think this has got to be one of the coldest marches I remember in a long time. <laughs> a little bit chilly, but that's okay. It's, it's good. Every day is good. Because, because, because why? Because God is good. Because God is good. The day that the Lord has made, right? The day that the Lord has made, I will rejoice and be glad in it. Um, so therefore, it's a beautiful day. Now, we have some things coming up, some events coming up. As we had an event yesterday, we had a good turnout yesterday, didn't we? Considering it was 22 degrees, yeah, we did have, you know, I, 
I'm, I'm interested to see what happens when it's warmer. You know, maybe we get some more. But um, the the senior lunches, our our soup lunches, are actually going very very well. Um, they they're almost on autopilot at this point, which is is perfect. That's kind of where we want them. Um, on the first, they, they will be at First Baptist. I'm hoping that they can catch the bug and want to do more. You know, that, that this will be their first one there. Um, so keep that in, in your mind. Keep that in your prayers. If you think of something to pray about, to pray that that, that will go well. Um, and the following two weeks, it'll be back at Holly Calvary, the 15th. Back at, back at Holly Calvary. And then we move into May, and May is going to be hosted by Carpenter's Church, but we're not sure where yet. Because um, I was talking to Kathy, and one of the things going on that particular um, weekend is uh, Women's Weekend in Holly, I think it is. That's what she was telling me. So we might have a chance to do it at um, one of the local places downtown. We're not we're still not sure. We're still going to try and figure that out and see how all that works into it. Either way, Carpenter's Church is going to host it. We just don't know where, but we've got got some time to figure it out. And then, then, whew, like eight weeks from now, finally be back here. <laughs> is, is that May 20th? Yep, May 20th at Holly Naz. And, you know, it, I, I, I'm glad everyone showed up, who showed up. It's awesome. Thank you for being there. That was yesterday. No, that was at Holly Calvary. But still, show up, have some soup, and, you know, and enjoy the, the fellowship. I, I know we had a, 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 and Domino's, yep. Yep, Mary played Domino's with a handful of people, and they, they left at 2 o'clock. Yeah, it was, you know, it was, it was, a, it was a good time. Had by all. One of these days I'm going to purposely, you know, okay, you guys can't sit at, sit together anymore. I'm going to make you sit over here. I'm going to give you assigned seats. I am mean. I am mean. But the idea is that we we, we don't just fellowship with each other here. You know, we, we grow the church. Um, the fact that we are all in the same building, you get to at least talk to people and start to build those relationships. And, and as we go further on, think about, okay, I'm here. I'm going to purposely sit with somebody different. Just to build that, it's you know, it's so easy to sit with. I didn't really, th- I don't, I don't think about it till after the fact. You know, like, oh yeah, I forgot about this. This is a great idea. I mean, most of the time, if you notice, when we have potluck, I seldom sit with my wife. She doesn't like me very much. Well. <laughs> No, it's, it's at that point of, you know, Sandy and I eat together, we eat dinner and stuff, we eat together often. So if I'm here in the church, there's really no point for me to sit with my wife. Oh, it's to grow the relationships with other people. You know exactly what I'm saying. It's, you know, it's, it's the way I say it. I know it's the way I say it, and I'm purposely being that way because it is funny. But, no, we, we love each other, and we could very easily sit, to, sit together and talk to each other and never talk to other people. And that's that's the point is part of, of Acts two forty two, devoting ourselves to the fellowship, we're breaking bread together, and we're breaking the bread together with members of the church, not members of our own family, our own little clique, right? It, it's we have to break out and build relationships, and that's that's the point. Um, as such, as as devoting ourselves to the fellowship, we have euchre when. When's euchre? April seventh. I was told April 7th is Good Friday. We will still play Euchre. Because we st- we're fellowshipping together. Right? It's, it's about being together. It's about building the church. And yes, Good Friday. Most, if you want to go to a Good Friday service, most Good Friday services are early in the afternoon. I don't think I've ever seen a Good Friday service at night. Yeah, it's usually right at noon, right? So you can very easily go to both. I, I haven't even thought of a Good Friday service here. When's the last time we had a Good Friday service here? When Mike was here? Yeah. So it's been six, seven years, five, six years. Um, 
don't know, maybe we'll have breakfast. Should we have breakfast? Should we do that again? Yeah. Eight for seven. You are? You better be here. You're the one that said the... Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking. What do you think? Okay. <laughs> I've got the day off. <laughs> let's have let's have a breakfast on Good Friday. What do you think? Nine o'clock, nine thirty? Yeah. Yeah. What's that? Well, it's almost a whole day in church. We come, we have breakfast together, um, and maybe if you want to do story, if not, we'll do something else. But as far as what we're going to do, we're going to make it very easy. 9.30, Good Friday morning, bring a dish, bring something for breakfast. We'll eat together, and then we'll do something as far as a little service, um, be it Ed, be it me, be it somebody else. We'll see. But we'll celebrate Good Friday together in the morning, and then we'll come back at night and have fun together. And invite all your friends and all your family members. And I was, Karen told me yesterday, she's like, you didn't invite me to Euchre. And I went, how'd you find out about Euchre? <laughs> Somebody else is inviting people. And that's what we're supposed to do, right? Again, to, to build the church. I, I don't really care where you're at in Sunday morning. You need to be in church. You need to be with believers. Because how do we grow closer to Christ? With believers, Absolutely. Right? All by ourselves, do we, do we grow? No, we really don't. We need to be with other believers somehow, some way, whether it's on Sunday morning, Wednesday nights, Thursday, it doesn't matter. Those online, if you're listening, if you're not with believers, figure out a way to be with believers at some point. It's necessary. If you read scripture, Jesus told us to, Paul told us to, Peter told us to, they all said, love one another. How can I love one another unless I'm with one another, right? You just can't, there's so many things we can't do by ourselves. Now, last week, what did I ask everyone to think about last week? Me and praying for me, thank you. Thank you. Everyone prayed for me. I had a good week. I had a fantastic week, actually, compared to the last handful of weeks. Um, there's been a small organizational change. I have a new boss which is, is, is good. Um, that takes a, a load off my shoulders in, in that aspect. Um, but, even though I did ask that, what did I preach about? <laughs> Let's see. Last week, I asked everyone to think about a question. All week long. Anyone actually think about the question I asked you to think about? What do you want from God? What do you want from God? So I'm taking it, nobody thought about the question of what do they want from God. You prayed this morning for what you want from God? Now, are, are you doing the thing you're supposed to be doing to get what you want from God? Remember? Well, the answer is there, there are blessings of plenty in Scripture. God says, I will bless you. God says, I will bless you. God says, I will bless you. In every one of those instances, God says, I will bless you if, right, if you do something. Even salvation in and of itself. Salvation is a blessing, but you have to do something to receive salvation. And what do you have to do to receive salvation? You have to believe, right? Believe, confess, and declare. And But we have to do something. We all throughout Scripture, God says, I will bless your socks off if, right? So I can't pray for God's blessings. I can't expect to have God's blessings if I'm not going to do what God says to do. It's, 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 it's not a, a, if I do this, I will automatically get these things the next day. That doesn't always happen. But if you're not willing to at least do what God asks you to do, you'll never, you should never get the blessings that you expect from God. That makes sense? Right? So there's some obedience that's needed from us to get the blessings that God says he'll give us. I just can't sit back 
I expect him to bless, bless my socks off. It doesn't work that way. So, write it down. Put it in your phones. Okay, I'm going to get their phone out. Once a day, set a reminder, Deb, once a day in your phone. And ask yourself the question, what do you want from God? What do you want from God? There's a reason we're here this morning, right? Yeah. To a certain extent, we all, there's an expectation. Well, only because God said he would give us. I'm not, you know, if you give automatically to get, that's giving for the wrong heart. But God says he'll bless you if you give. Jesus himself said, look, if you give, he's going to what? Yeah, he's going to bless you. He's going to give back to you. Now, it may not be a, a monetary, right? If, when, I, when I give $100, I may not get $200 back. It may be blessings in a whole different way. Right? Be anxious for nothing. How do I get rid of, rid of anxiety and worry? Give it to God. And we'll talk more about that after Ed gets up here so we can have an offering. Father, we thank you so much for your love, for your grace, and your mercy. Lord, we literally everything that we have is a gift from you. And Father, you just ask that we give part of it back to you. Lord, as we give part of it back, Holy Spirit, I ask that you help us to be joyful givers. Help us to give and, and say thank you, Lord, so much for blessing us more than we can even begin to imagine. Father, I ask that you take these, these offerings, you take these tithes that we're about to give, and you multiply them, Lord, so, so that we can do infinitely more than we even begin to think. Because you're going to do infinitely more than we can think. In your name we pray, amen. So are there any reasons to be anxious about tomorrow? It's Monday. <laughs> like, that's easy. Of course, it's just Monday. So when you look at the news, the news is always good. <laughs> no? 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 Well, let's see here. This Just this morning, brace for a crash landing as the U.S. economy barrels towards recession. What's that? Yeah, I thought you thought it was already here. But the thing is, is this is news, right? And when you see this type of news, does this make you anxious in any way, shape, or form? Some of us, yes. Some of us, no. And those that, that have no anxiety over the news, awesome. But there are a lot of us that do, right? Because do you remember the last big recession we had? You lost a lot of money, absolutely. And, and Mary got to, to know me incredibly, <laughs> much more than she ever did because I lived there for four years during the last recession, right? I don't want to be in a recession like last time because as much as I love my mother-in-law, I don't want to move back in with her. She doesn't want me either. Absolutely, it's correct, right? And it's, you know, but... You think about that, and who else lost their jobs back in 2007, 2008, or lost a lot of money? This stuff sometimes creates a little, little bit of anxiety for us, even though we shouldn't have the anxiety. Think about what it does for people who don't believe at all, right? Another, whoops, I just turned it off. Another article I, I, I uh, looked at was like, really? North Korea has almost 800,000 people who want to do what? No, they don't want to leave. They want to destroy the U.S. North Korea claims almost 800,000 have signed up to fight against the U.S.
That's why you don't watch the news. Absolutely, right? This is why I don't watch the news either, because the news does nothing but create anxiety. And I remember, actually, I've got myself in trouble for telling people not to watch the news. As a matter of fact, Deb Coleman told me that it's all my fault that Ed no longer watches the news and looks at YouTube videos. <laughs> you know? Because it was, yeah, it was good for Ed. It was a couple years ago. I said, stop watching the news. Anyone remember that? Yeah. Stop? Yeah. Right, you quit watching the news. Why? Because this stuff here does nothing but create anxiety and worry about tomorrow. <laughs> Every day, leave it. And that's where we should be. That's, that's exactly where we should be. We should, we should be giving it to God, right? And it's not just recession. It's not just war. How about your health? You don't worry about that either? Who here worries about their health? A little bit, right? And like I said, we all are in different spots. Some of us worry to the point where it actually makes us sick, and some of us don't worry at all. And those that don't worry at all, I envy you because I have some worries, Right? I definitely have some worries, and I should have some worries. And it's very easy to focus in on what gives me anxiety and not focus in on what God said. What does God's word say? Do not be anxious. Do not be anxious. Let's start with Psalm 121. In Psalm 121, if I can find it here, I look up to the mountains. Does my help come from there? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let you stumble. The one who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel never slumbers or sleeps. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord stands beside you as your protective shade. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord keeps you from all harm and watches over your life. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and go, both now and forever. As believers, who watches over us? God watches over us. So we don't need to worry about tomorrow, right? What does our buddy Peter say in 1 Peter? 1 Peter 5.7. He says, cast some of your cares, all, all of them. 1 Peter 5, 7, give all your worries and cares to God. All your worries and cares, who do we give them to? God. Why? Because he cares about you, right? Give all your worries and cares to God because he cares about you. God himself wants us to give everything to him. I find that mind-blowing that the creator of the universe wants all of my cares and all of my worries. Not just when I think they're finally big enough, but every single one of them. And then, one of my favorite passages of scripture, Matthew 6, which sometimes I, I forget Hopefully you're not as forgetful as I am. I should put this on the mirror in the morning and read it every day. Matthew 6, let's start at verse 25. This is Jesus speaking. This is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear, isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't harvest or plant or store foods in barns, for your Heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you more valuable to Him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? 
And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things, saying what we will eat, what we will drink, what we will wear. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father already knows all of your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. So instead of worrying, what am I supposed to do here? What's that? Give it to God. Seek the kingdom of God above all else. Above all else. Is it say seek only the kingdom of God and nothing else? Seek the kingdom of God above all else, right? Seek first the kingdom of God, and then do we have to worry about any any of our needs? No, none of them. That should be freeing for all of us. We should be able to be free of anxiety, free from worry, because of that one scripture. But what does it require on our part? How about trust? How about trust? Right? Because God's word says, seek first kingdom of God. Don't worry about anything. Oh, by the way, cast all your cares upon me. I'm going to care for you. I've got it. You're in my hands. But if we don't trust him, are we going to believe that's true? Mm -mm. So we have to trust him. Which is a piece of cake, right? What do you mean? You're laughing? It's not a piece of cake? Do what we're supposed to do. We know we have to seek God and study God. Are we going to? I'm saying this for the benefit of the people online and the people that are sitting back that may not be able to hear you. So I'm repeating what you're saying. Not just for fun. <laughs> parts to seek the Holy Spirit. It's recognizing that we can't do it on our own, right? Trusting him for literally everything. Everything. There's a proverb that talks about that. It's part Proverbs 3. And if we're not, again, doing our part, like Liz has said, to open ourselves up to the Holy Spirit, which is our part. Ed, to trust him and to seek him first, right? And then let God do what God's going to do, the, the fruits of the Spirit. We're not going to get the fruits of the Spirit unless we're going to trust God, unless we're going to open ourselves up to him. I just can't sit back and get it. I actually have to do something. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Trust the Lord with a little bit of your heart. Trust the Lord with all of your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Who here wants to depend on their own understanding? I kind of want to because I think I'm smart enough. Am I smart enough? No, I'm not smart enough. Seek his will in couple things you need to do 
all that you do, right? And he will show you what path to take. Now, is, it, is that easier said than done? It is easier said than done, right? We have to remind ourselves, that's part of renewing your mind daily, is to, and part of reading the Word seven minutes a day, is to look at things and say, oh, that's right, I'm supposed to do this. Because believe it or not, most of us are forgetful, especially when it comes to things of God. If you don't think so, someone tell me what Acts 2.42 says. <laughs> Isaiah 26.3. Isaiah 26.3. You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. You will keep in perfect peace all who what? Trust in who? In God. Who likes to be at peace? How is our peace stolen? Anxiety. How, and do we allow ourselves to be anxious? Absolutely. Do we put ourselves in places where we can be, become anxious? Why? Right? That, that, that is part of our part, too, right? That, that's one of the reasons that we don't watch the news. We don't read these articles. We don't look at things. It's okay. God wants us to be at peace. That's what God wants for us. But we purposely put ourselves in places where our peace will be stolen. Sometimes it, it's going to happen. We're going to be in a situation where, you know, we find ourselves in. But if we purposely put ourselves in a place where our peace is stolen, why do we do that? I, I, I wish I was... I wish I was there, but I'm not. And uh, that's, and the thing is, is God wants us to trust in Him for what? Everything. What does it mean to trust somebody? We just accept them? Do we believe in them? How about we go to the dictionary and look it up? So definition of trust as a verb, trust as a verb, to rely on the truthfulness or their accuracy of. To rely on the truthfulness or their accuracy of. God says he'll care for us. Do we trust him? Do we believe in his word? If we believe in his word, that means we're trusting in the accuracy or the truthfulness of his word. To place confidence in, to rely on. Do we place confidence in God that he will do what he says he's going to do? Do we really rely on him all the time? Some of us do, some of us don't. Some of us want to more. I don't always rely on God. I know better, intellectually. Sometimes my emotions get in the way of my intellect. Sometimes my emotions get in the way of my intellect. I know better, but my emotions, <laughs> it should be the other way around, but it's not, right? We're just so up and down and we let things of the world get in on us or worrying about our kids. There's so many things that, that can take our, our minds and get them to put confidence elsewhere. And we're not relying on God. So we have to keep continue, like I said, renew our minds and rely on God. To look at his word and say, okay, I, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make the choice, the intellectual choice, to rely on God. Yes, ma'am. That's part of the. That's part of trusting. We're relying on God, right? We're. 
We never sit back and wait for him to do it. If we sit back and wait for him to do it, is he going to do it? Yeah, he's pushing you, right? right? And that, that's part of, of not leaning on our understanding, but trusting in God. Trusting in God, it's a verb. It's an action. It's something we do. It's the choice that we make to say, okay, I don't understand what's going on, but I'm going to trust God and I'm going to move forward because God always wants us to move forward. He's always pushing and pulling us forward. That's one reason we have, that's one reason we're supposed to be with believers. Because when we're with one another, it should become easier to trust in God. As I see people's faith, and I see people like Terry and Deb that trust God probably sometimes more than I do, I should be encouraged by that. The leapers, man, are you kidding me? They're, they're, they're spiritual giants because they, they trust God. And to see people that trust God and to say, okay, how do I get to the point where I'm like you? And how do I get to the point where I no longer look at this junk going on in the world and to trust God and become like you? Don't want the answer right now, but, I, you know, it's other believers that help us to trust. It's other believers that, that can prod us a little bit, that can encourage us a little bit. But by ourselves, all, especially if I'm by myself. Are you kidding me? By myself, I am my own worst enemy. I need to be with people. We all do. And he, it's exactly right. As an individual, I like to be alone. I love to be alone. But I know I'm my own worst enemy, and I have to be with people. I know I'm better because of people. I'm better because of believers. So much better than I am by myself. For people like Will, who loves people, loves being around people, and loves it, it's easy for you to be with people. Yeah, he'd say so. I mean, it's his personality, right? There's, there's extroverts, introverts, the whole, you know, some of us would rather be alone. But we, those of us that would rather be alone have to recognize that we can't be alone. Nor did God design it for us to be alone. He designed it for us to be with people so that we can do what? Grow and trust him more. Be not in our own understanding, but say, okay, I am going to make the choice. I'm going to make the choice to trust and rely on God. And that might be because Sheila told me to do so. Isaiah 12, 2. Isaiah 12, 2. See, see, God has come to save me. I will trust him and not be afraid. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has given me victory. He's given me victory. When I trust in him, no fear and victory comes from God. When we do what? Trust in him. So I read an article in Psychology Today. You ready for this? Trust is an emotional brain state, not just an expectation of behavior. It is heavy, right? But, again, it's intellectually knowing I should trust God. It's not just emotionally knowing I should trust God. And the two have to somehow, my, my brain has to some, sometimes tell my emotions, sorry, my brain has to tell my emotions that I need to trust God. And I intellectually look at Scripture and God says, trust me with what? Everything. I know that intellectually. I may not know that emotionally when I'm in the midst of garbage going on. And that's where, okay, my mind has to push into my emotions and line up and say, hey, get your head straight. Now, if my mind can't overcome my emotions, what am I supposed to do? Okay. Thank you. You can't. Your emotions are keeping you from praying. And even when you pray, your emotions are keeping you from accepting what God wants to give you. 
What do we need to do? Have someone slap you around. No, that's exactly, that's the right answer, though. The right answer is, again, when we're with people, with other believers, who can help pull us out of that. You all prayed for me last week. You helped pull me out of that. By myself, if I had not asked for that, guess what? I'd still be there. Right? It's admitting our weaknesses and saying, hey, you know what? Right now, I'm not trusting God. Is that a bad thing? No. No. I, when we admit it, God's like, yes! Now I can help you. Right? So, don't think you're, oh, I'm perfect. You know, some days we are, some days we aren't. And when we're not, be willing to admit it. Be willing to say, hey, I need help. Please help me today. I just need you to stand with me. I just need you to listen to me. And then I need you to pray for me. Help me to trust God a little more. Help, my, my, help me to, to, to do what I know I'm supposed to do. Right? But I can't get there because my emotions are such in turmoil. Just because God's word says it doesn't mean we want to do it. Or doesn't mean we're, sometimes we're even capable of doing it. That's what happens with the world, folks. That's why we're supposed to be with people. That's why we're supposed to rely on one another. Not just devoted to God's word, but devoted to the fellowship. Because the fellowship helps us to keep God's word in our emotional states. Make sense? Jeremiah 17, 7. But blessed are those who trust in the Lord. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. Blessed. Are you blessed? Because you do what? Trust in the Lord. Right? So it's very apparent in Scripture. We should not be anxious and we should not worry about our lives. We should come down to doing what? Trusting the Lord. Right, absolutely trusting the Lord. God says, give me some of your worries. All. All of them. Every single one of them, no matter how small we think it might be, who are we supposed to give it to? Mm -hmm. We're supposed to give it to the Lord. So do you actually trust him? When we remember to. Right. Yeah, that's a good point, right? Yeah, you know. Throughout the week, as you go throughout your week, you might run into something where you're going to be like, hey, right? So do you actually trust him? Again, that's the, let your intellect have power over your emotional state. If you can't get there, what do you do? Call someone. Absolutely, call someone. Right? Say, hey, help. I'm in a whirlwind and I can't get out of it. That's all it takes, right? Is, is not just, tr we, yes, we're trusting God, but when I go to Ed, am I still trusting God? Absolutely, because he told me to lock arms with Ed. He told Ed to encourage me. He told Ed to pray for me. Right? It doesn't mean I don't trust God any less. I just need some help through it. Right? Absolutely. Philippians 4, 6. Philippians 4, 6. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he's done. Don't worry about anything. And when you pray for everything, what happens? We get into verse 7. It says, The peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Right? Pray about everything. And you'll have peace that transcends understanding.
what happens to the church when we're all living in peace? What happens to the church when our anxiety is gone? We become a beacon of light for those that see it and want what we have. So, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Don't worry about tomorrow. Let tomorrow worry about itself. Be anxious for literally what? Nothing. It's not always easy. It's there. How do we get there? Trust in God, and we'll be around other believers, other people, to help us strengthen our faith, to help us down that journey. Only you can tell me if you're anxious for tomorrow. God doesn't want us to be anxious for tomorrow. If you don't want to be anxious for tomorrow, what do you need to start doing? Trusting and praying and talking about it with other believers. Then we can get there. Maybe you'll have less anxiety tomorrow than you did today. Right? Maybe it's a long journey that takes months to get there. But if you're not willing to start, you'll never get there. Ever. Father, we thank you for your love, for your grace, and your mercy. And Lord, you tell us not to worry about anything, not to be anxious for anything, but to, number one, seek first the kingdom of God and he will provide for all our needs and then you also tell us to pray and when we pray to you and then tell you everything your peace will guard our hearts and our minds and Lord help us to trust you to, to, to look at your word to see your word and then to just trust to rely on you to believe in you us to make the choice to trust you to where our, our intellect can overcome our emotion. And Holy Spirit, help us to, to, to that when we are, we are in that point where we can't overcome our emotions, to, to remember to call somebody. To remember to rely, rely also on, on the church, the other, other believers to help us through that. Because we're not alone. You don't want us to be alone. You didn't create us to be alone. You created us not only to love you, but you created us to love others. Lord, help us to remember that. Help us to trust in you. Help us to, to be anxious for nothing. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. In the words of Paul, Romans 15, 13, I pray, I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Have a good week, everybody.